Welcome into this crossover Thursday, Locked On Bears, Locked On Vikings crossover here on the Locked On Podcast Network. I'm Lauren Cox, along with Luke Braun from Locked On Vikings. And this crossover Thursday podcast is presented by our friends at Prize Picks. Prize Picks is so much fun and it's easy to play. There's no competing with other players, it's just you versus the projections available. Pick two to five players, and if they score more or less than their Prize Picks projection, you can win up to 10 times your money on your entry. It can literally take less than 60 seconds to enter. It's that easy. We love Prize Picks, and we know you will too. First time users can receive a 100% instant deposit match up to $100 with our promo code LOCKED ON. That's prizepicks.com, promo code LOCKED ON. Luke, as we dive into this Bears Vikings matchup, I, I know a number, a fair number of, of Locked On Bears listeners, and I'm guessing a fair number of Locked On Vikings listeners, aren't huge fans of Peter Bukowski from Locked On Packers, but I can't help but part <laughs> crossover last week with him previewing that that Bears Vikings game and uh got a little testy there got a little fun a little fun jabbing back and forth and uh, unfortunately I don't know that our teams are quite in the same position to have the same sort of standing at least on my end to to push back on uh, what you might be saying for the Vikings <laughs> Peter's real good at needling Vikings fans uh, I never wanted to a crossover like that again <laughs> that was awful <laughs> Well, for people who haven't listened, and if, if you if you want some catharsis, catharsis, catharticism, is that the word? I don't know how to make that a noun. Catharsis? Catharsis? So if you want some catharsis, go back and listen to last week's Crossover Thursday, Packers versus Vikings. Some great jabs back and forth between those two hosts. This week, we look at a Bears-Vikings matchup where officially Nathan Peterman is going to be the starting quarterback for the Chicago Bears, and Justin Fields it has been ruled out for the game with hip strain after an MRI was conducted this week. Not totally unexpected that, that they might find a way to shut him down, but now we know, and, and that's got to be the dominant storyline for the Chicago Bears this week, is like, oh God, we have to watch Nathan Peterman start this game. It's not so much it's not so much like, what is Nathan Peterman going to be able to do, but it's like, how can we how can we limit the, the damage, and how can we get through the Nathan Peterman experience without large volumes of alcohol or other substances. Cause I think that's really going to be on the docket for a lot of us this week. Cause I, I, I know the Vikings are coming off of a rough game against the minute against the Packers, but even if they go with their backups, we've seen bears versus backup Vikings before. And it, even then it doesn't go well. Let me introduce you to the Vikings defense. <laughs> if you have a mobile quarterback, if you have 11 players with a pulse, you will be able to put up 30 points. <laughs> Even Nathan Peter. Sunday, Sunday, Sunday. <laughs> that, it's just like the, what is that? It's the, it was the oh, I don't put anything past them. I like, it's, I know it's Nathan Peterson, but I have, I have no faith. It, it, they have been the get right game for everybody every single year, including the last time we played the bears. I think it was the only 200 yard passing game. Justin Fields had for like three months. It's they're awful. They, they this is going to come down to a Nathan Peterman game winning drive attempt. There is no stop. The, the cosmos demands it. No matter how this game starts, no matter how every, anything goes, Nathan Peterson is going to be down a field goal with 45 seconds and no timeouts. And we're going to have to experience that all together. It, it would feel to me like a miracle if you could even get into the position where Nathan Peterman has the late comeback attempt. If the Bears can be within a, a one score at the end of this game with Peterman starting, that just fe that feels like a win. Like that that's that's a W in and of itself. If this team that just got shellacked, <laughs> so possible. <laughs> you know, they, they, like Detroit, Detroit ran up the score on this defense, and that was with Justin Fields in the offense struggling to get things together. So if you take Fields out of the equation, some of the few offensive generations that they've had, and put in the guy who has thrown. Was it five interceptions in the first half? It was definitely five interceptions in the game, but it was... It was in a half, and then he got pulled, yeah. Yes. In the famous game. Um, and that's... Here's... Go ahead. Uh, we're, so the Vikings will also play a whole bunch of twos, I bet. Um, they have... They've said otherwise, and the spread immediately jumped like four points. Uh, but they have already been rotating twos out, especially on, or guys out, especially on defense. Harrison Smith has not played full games in the last few, few weeks. Um, Eric Kendricks has not played full games. They've been rotating guys like Daniel Hunter and Zadarius Smith out more. Um, 
they're not benching these guys fully. It's not full on rest your starters, but they're pulling them more. They're rotating other guys in more. Um, so if you, they're going to play a lot of twos and also the Vikings are idiots. <laughs> they are really good at letting bad teams into games that they shouldn't be in. Uh, th- anything is possible. <laughs> this is, this team is more powerful than point spreads. Everything will be closer than it should be. <laughs> My my favorite part about how this matchup is lining up is that you know, the NFL took away a preseason game to add week 18, and the Bears and Vikings are both treating it like a preseason game. They're just giving the Maybe, big, yeah. big finger of like, hey, we're just going to play our backups and get a look at some of these young guys out there, and neither team is particularly like overly worried about winning this game. I know the, the Vikings have some potential. They ha- will, yeah. That they could win the two seed if San Francisco loses to David Blau, which happens after our game. So they won't get the luxury of knowing and they'll have to go out and try to win this game. So they're going to treat it. They're not going to treat it like a full on meaningless like it was a few years ago when uh, it was what Sean Mullins started. Sean Um, Manning. And uh, Sean, Nick, I, yeah, I just pulled I, up that box score and I was going to go there next that in, in that game, the Vikings lost 19 to 21 with Sean Mannion going 12 of 21 for 126 yards and two picks and leading rusher. Mike Boone had almost 150 Mike yards. Boone. Yeah. Oh, I'm, his injury stuff has been such a bummer. I love Mike Boone. Um, yeah, who knows? Uh, <laughs> but like Kirk Cousins will play like I don't think this will be a, a Nick Mullins game. But if it's out of hand early, uh, I think they'll probably be a little bit quicker to get the baseball cap on him. So if anything, that's how the Bears make it close at the end, right? Is that the Vikings go up big, they bench Kirk Cousins, and then maybe Peterman gets a late touchdown or two to make the final deficit a little bit more respectable than the, you know, the 41-10 that the Bears just got done with last week against the Lions. Yeah, and well, my understanding too, you guys probably want to lose this game, right? Like draft pick and stuff. Like you, I would imagine Bears fans are probably rooting for Vikings fans as much as Vikings fans are for the Vikings as much as Vikings. <laughs> yes, fans are. if the Houston Texans win on Sunday and the Bears lose, the Bears get the number one overall pick in the draft. Okay. But if the Maybe Bears they can get a quarterback that can throw for more than twenty five hundred yards in a season. Wow. <laughs> Which is now guaranteed. He did that. He's two, two, I just looked it up. Uh, what is it? 2242. That'll be the final 2022 stats for Justin Fields. And and less than 100 yards away, I think, from the NFL's single season rushing record on the other side of that spectrum. But it's been it's been a different way of measuring. Wait, really? Oh, he could have hit a record? Yeah, he was he was right behind uh, Lamar's Aww. record by about like, less than 100 yards. He was expected to <sighs> break that in this game had he played. But alas, no, but a hundred percent would have. Well, but that's and that's the equation that that adds into the equation of Justin Fields' production. That that of course it's it's historically low passing yards for an offense this season. But that hasn't always been the full intent of the offense. Is not has been has not been to pass for as many yards as they can, but it has been to score as many points as they can. And they had a good stretch of scoring thirty points a game there against some pretty decent teams on the schedule. But instead. It will be Nathan Peterman, and it will be some backups against some backups with some starters in there for both teams. We'll get into what matchups we're looking forward to in this game as best we can based on how these lineups might roll as we continue our crossover Thursday Locked on Bears, Locked on Vikings right here on the Locked on Podcast Network. This crossover Thursday podcast is brought to you by our friends at betonline.net, the number one source for all of your sports betting info, stats, news, and analysis. Surely this Justin Fields sitting down news is going to drastically tweak this Bears-Vikings line. Yeah, it it jumped all the way to Vikings minus eight. I believe earlier this week it was Vikings minus 3.5 on betonline. I five and a half yesterday. Five and a half yesterday now. So it's now without fields. Yeah, it's going to jump a whole bunch more now without fields. Okay, it's continuing to slide more and more. So if you got your bets in earlier this week, certainly uh, you can be feeling a little bit better about how that line may have changed. Unless I guess unless you were betting on the Bears for an upset there. But whether it's the Bears Vikings game or any other sports matchup, you can get all the latest odds and trends for every professional and amateur league out there with bet online. They're always going to be the fastest and easiest way to get your important sports betting information. So head to the website today or use your mobile device to learn more about all the different trends and action happening each and every day. Bet online, where the game starts. 
We continue this crossover Thursday, Locked On Bears, Locked On Vikings. Lauren Cox alongside Luke Braun. And as we get into the matchups, Luke, I think this is a little bit tricky for us because we don't know exactly, first of all, you know, who's healthy and who's not, but then also even with the guys that are healthy, how long they're going to play, how much they're going to play and what role they can go to here. But we we think we both know both of these defenses are going to be struggling a bit in this matchup. And I think that's what scares the hell out of Bears fans with Justin Jefferson, first and foremost, going against a Bears secondary in this game that will once again start four rookies, assuming all four of those rookies are healthy and good to go with two of them that being would prefer to start four rookies, but might not get the option to. <laughs> yeah. Cause they had to start Harrison hand last week or had to play Harrison hand when Jay oh. got hurt. So, and he played pretty well in, in one game. So Gee. he could have a, a revenge, a revenge tour in this one. But I mean, none of these guys do I trust against Justin Jefferson in any sort of one-on-one matchup. And even the safety play has been a little bit subpar behind them. And I'm, Scared pretty firmly of them not being able to shut him down, even if they try and double team him on every snap. They don't have Jalen Johnson to shadow him across the formation. Kyler Gordon has has developed as a rookie, but is still not, I think, where ideally you would want him to be at this stage of his season. So it's it's definitely one of those really scared that he's going to get his quick hundred yards and a couple of touchdowns. The Vikings will have that lead, and then you could sit Justin Jefferson for the second half. Yeah, we are on uh, Justin Jefferson record watch a little bit. Um, kind of because of how bad the Packers game went, he sort of fell off pace for all of it. Uh, but he need, would need 229 yards against the Bears to get it. And you know what? If it's Kendall Vildor and Harrison Vildor Hand, or oh my goodness, uh, <laughs> yeah, that's, that's how bad it is. It's Josh Blackwell and Jalen Jones, a second Jalen, both Jaylen, under. Oh, Jalen Jones. Jalen Jones ended up in man coverage on Justin Jefferson a ton in the first matchup, which is beyond me that they were in just like straight up middle of field closed, man. (laughs) That was confusing to me. And I was confusing to Kirk cousins too, who changed the, like the Vikings changed the play at the line, like every play for those first three drives when the Vikings got up to that 21, three lead because they didn't think the bears were going to do that. They had the can ready just in case (laughs) one step. ahead, you think, Oh, you think we're going to not leave our guys in man coverage surprise, like (laughs) one-on-one it felt like, Oh, all right. I'll take this again. Yeah. And what uh, is he going for? Is it? I'm sorry. Was it? Is it the like all time single season for a team for for the Vikings or for the league or what? What, what record is he? Um, it would be. Oh, I'm sorry. Two twenty nine would be to reach two thousand. He needs oh. eighty two yards to put. Or no, he needs. Uh, Didn't mean to put you on the spot there. I know it's hard to get to pull the numbers up when you don't have. Yeah, a no, I got. I got to pull it. Um, he's also chasing Calvin Johnson's record, although it's always going to feel a little bit weird now that he needed 17 games to do it. He could have hit it in, uh, with, I think like 209 or something like that. So I think like 190 or something like that, he needs to beat Calvin Johnson's record. Yeah, that um, doesn't seem out of the realm of possibility at all in this game, unless he just doesn't get to play a full four quarters. Right. The baseball cap comes on at halftime. Like that might happen. Um, I we should talk though about all the uh little revenge game guys we got going on. We got a Harrison Hand revenge game, uh, Duke Shelley revenge game, Kyrie's Tonga revenge game. Um, Armand Watts played in the first one, so I can't really call it a revenge game because he already had his, but he's still there. Um, no one more Emir Smith Marset, he got cut. Rip, he was, yeah, rip. Uh, can't give you guys the ball at the end of this game if it's close. That's that's unfortunate. That was your, that was your secret weapon in the first game. W- waved over ball security issues in camp. I, I might <laughs> <laughs> because he could he kept fumbling punts. Funny how that um, works. Huh? <laughs> Who could have seen this coming? Um, hey, you know, am I forgetting to anybody? Have, no, no. I think I think you're. I think that looks full to me but it's funny how the bears would kill to have either duke shelley or kairos tonga right now and uh, it's extremely funny uh and- duke shelley is like playing he won the starting job he beat out cam dantzler and cam dantzler hasn't been a disaster or anything he has been, been, been like kind of a low-end starter probably somebody you want to improve upon but duke shelley is like balling is it dare dare i say that that ryan pace guy knew a little bit of what he was doing i mean by no by all means he was not an abject disaster at finding talent sometimes especially via the draft not so much for yeah. Duke, Duke has- can play I mean he's he's five nine and he runs a four five so there is a ceiling on this yeah. uh but I, I we're not putting him in the nickel that's I think a big part of it you guys had him in the nickel and we we have him outside and I think that's just a more comfortable place for him even though he's short and I hate it when defensive coordinators do that just because a guy is short um 
So I guess lesson learned, I hope there. Uh, and then Kyrie's Tonga has been, I would say, boomer bust, but more booms than busts. He's got some really cool run stops in him. He's got a couple of pretty big moments and in, in pass rush. But he also, I mean, he'll get like kind of washed down the river sometimes or he'll get screwed up and pushed out of his gap or whatever. Uh, and then you'll get a big run. You're like, hmm, who got what? Ah, there's 95. <laughs> but we're we're like largely very happy with both of these guys who were waiver pickups that needed to play because of injury. In, initially, Cam Dantzler had uh, an ankle injury that had him on IR earlier in the season. And Jonathan Bullard has been on IR, actually just got declared to return um, so he's in his 21 day window now and we've needed former to hmm? another former bear, Ryan, uh, oh, Ryan, that's right. A Phil Emery draft pick. Now that I think it's a couple of GMs ago, but a third former Chicago bears, third round pick, Jonathan Bullard, another yeah, flame out here. He's that... been around the block. Um, yeah. and he won the starting job. He's the reason we cut Armand Watts, uh, yes. cause he won the starting job in camp. And then Armand Watts kind of became like a, a $3 million backup and like, what are we doing here? Um, but yeah, that. Then Kyrie Tonga has been like the third string guy at that position. Sure, well, I, I remember when when the Bears got Watson and and Amir Smith Barset from the Vikings at the start of the season. It was like, oh man, like the, the you know Vikings are better roster. Like they cut they cast off a couple guys that are real talented, and like the Bears. Yeah, we like, knew yeah, he was going to score like three touchdowns on us in Week Five too. <laughs> like we knew he was going to kill us. <laughs> we were just like, ah, oh, okay, here it comes. And and yet you know, eighteen weeks later. uh, Watts is was a starter. They kind of benched him just this past week. They cut him down in the rotation a little bit because he's he hasn't really done a ton there. He's been a good like high motor energy guy coming in, but hasn't been super productive as a pass rusher and at times gets washed out in the running game. So they put in some more beef on the interior there, like more true nose tackles. But it's kind of just been a one game thing. So we're not sure. You know, he's still going to be in the rotation. It's just a matter of whether he starts and, and plays the yeah. Lions. Here. And of course, Amir Smith Marset's been a was a disaster and it's gone. And then Harrison Hand played like starting level snaps because of the injury last week and might be a starter in this game going up against Justin Jefferson. So maybe there's some maybe there's some familiarity familiarity there that can uh, <laughs> that can give him any sort of semblance of a chance to even sniff Justin Jefferson's dust a, as he blows by him on the field. But it's going to make for a messy game and I think a difficult game to predict and we'll get into some of our yeah. predictions on how this game might go. We'll do our best with limited injury information and limited information on how long some of these starters are going to play as we continue our crossover Thursday podcast right here with locked on bears and locked on Vikings. Before we get into those predictions, let me tell you about the best tasting protein bar on the planet. It's that time of year. We're all trying to be good, cut some calories, uh, but the sweet tooth cannot be denied. That is exactly what Built Bar is for. Uh, they are all covered in 100% real chocolate. They actually taste good, even though they are a protein bar, but they only have like 130 calories, four grams of sugar, and they're chalked with 17 grams of protein. It's the magic of collagen protein. And I am not going to pretend to understand it. They come in flavors that are fantastic, like churro, peanut butter, brownie, coconut, almond, stuff that you're going to find in the usually unhealthy aisles of the grocery store, but not with Built Bar. And you can actually find it at Walmart or Sam's Club now. You can still get it at Built.com if that's how you prefer, but you could also head down to your local Sam's Club and grab a 13 bar box with all the hit flavors like brownie batter and churro. So. Uh, thank me later. Go to built.com or Walmart or Sam's Club and get your hands on some built bar. All right. As we wrap up our crossover Thursday, locked on Bears, locked on Vikings, Luke. This is a, a tough one to predict. We know the betting line, like we mentioned earlier, from betting line is now. It's, like, it's tough one to like care about predicting. Nobody per, needs yeah. this. Yeah, no one really needs the outcome. I, I, I predict. I mean, listen, the Bears have lost. Nine games in a row now. I've actually lost count if it's up to 10. See, oh. nine games in a row. Nine, three, and, and uh, three and 12? Three 13 right now, and have lost nine okay. games in a row. Yeah. And I, I don't know that starting Nathan Peterman is ever going to be the formula to spark the team back into a victory. As much as you said, the you know, the Vikings defense has been a get right game for a lot of people. Maybe it could have been a get right game for Justin Fields after I thought he played, he regressed particularly against the Lions and played one of the worst games we've seen from him in, in, in a decent stretch here and felt like, you know, one more game against the Vikings could have been something that kind of steady the ship a little bit there, but instead 
it's Nathan Peterman's chance to show the NFL one more time what he can and can't do. And if, if I might throw out a bold prediction, I wonder if we might not just see Tim Boyle take the field at some point that maybe a Nathan <laughs> Peterman benching happens in this game. And Tim I love it. Call up. That's what I'm going to, that, that's my predict. That's my bold prediction. Maybe not a score prediction there. Absolutely my love it. Is that Tim Boyle attempts a pass in this game. If not, more than one pass. It isn't just on the field for, heaven forbid, a kneel down for some reason. But, I mean, to, to throw a score on it feels almost impossible. I'll say, I don't know, 34-13 Vikings, of course, in, in that one. But I'm not I, – I don't have a strong feeling either way. I mean, the Bears are going to score very few, and the Vikings are going to score a lot. And the deficit between there is going to be large. Um. All right. I am going to call us. I need to find a scoregami. That's what I'm going to do. I like that. Uh, 32 to 19. That's my score prediction because that's that would be scoregami. Uh, for so for Bears fans and for you, learn you might not know if you don't listen to Locked On Vikings on Fridays. We do bold predictions every week, uh, and so I love the the bold prediction energy, and we get increasingly unhinged with it. It's fantastic. So I much prefer that to uh to a, a vanilla score prediction for a game like this that can just only be weird like this can only be like a cursed mockery of the sport this is not going to be a dignified experience nobody's going to walk away from this with their head held high <laughs> this is going to be a disaster there's going to be like a a vikings punt that becomes a safety that changes the score yeah. and Oh, I love it. A weird safety, not like holding in the end zone, but like a like a safety that gets on Sports Center. Yeah. Yeah. Like somebody fumbles and then the ball slips and goes into the end zone and a Vikings player falls on it or something. And, and yeah, and the Bears get like a cheap one that way to give them a score of like 11 on the score. Yeah, that's how we get to the scoregami. Yes. For, for those who don't know, I, I know it's a common thing for your listeners, but scoregami oh, is, right. is the first time the outcome of a game ever ends in that exact score between right. the winning team and the losing team. And there's a website there's where you can never been a 38, 18 game. Yeah, exactly. And so that's what we're going to be rooting for. First and foremost in this game is some kind of weird score total that we've never, because if it's 35, 14 boring, like, yeah, we can all just forget this game immediately. Yeah. But if it's like, what was it? 38, what was the score? You'd said 38, 11 or 38, 38 19? 18, 38, 18. Like how you get it's to history. 18 is is wild to me i love that like yeah. 11 and 18 are great scores to have in a game because it, it takes some it kind takes of something really weird <laughs> <laughs> but that's isn't that a great way to describe this game though it's just going to be something really weird it just feels like it's destined it to have it's week 18 bears vikings always has something odd to it but then you throw in peterman in there and you throw in you know, the vikings you know getting harrison smith sitting him down a little bit and it's just going to be a weird game, and hopefully it's been an appropriately weird crossover Thursday podcast to preview. Yes. A little bit of Josh Metellus, a little bit. We got Oli Udo coming in uh, for an end because Brian O'Neill has a partially torn Achilles, and he's out for the season. Uh, starting right tackle, a little bit of Chris Reed or maybe Greg Mance, whoever that is. Uh, yeah, we've got all the dogs coming out, really. Yep. We're we're going deep in the bucket for this one, and hopefully we don't have to go as deep in the playoffs because of it. And, and the the Bears uh, starting right guard and backup right guard both got hurt last week, so we're not sure what their health oh, status is. Kevin Jenkins. At this point, yeah, he had a second oh. neck injury. Um, oh, which well, this one was while he walked off the field. The first one was carted off the field hospital. Second oh, one was nice. second one was seemed fine, but they're just calling it a neck thing. And let's set out the rest is of the it game. Disc and, stuff. We haven't gotten a real strong explanation for what it was. Um, okay. But the point being, they may start a Dieter Isolin at right guard as a result, oh or, or perhaps Larry Borum, but, uh, or even Alex Leatherwood's in the conversation there. So it's going to oh. be, <laughs> it's going to be, it's going to be a mess. And I, and I just hope we get some sort of overwhelming entertainment value out of it. And it's not just a disgusting, boring, game that we get something fun and wacky and wild to make it worth our while having tuned in for this game i hope we made it worth your while listening to this crossover thursday podcast thanks for making locked on bears or locked on vikings your first listen today and hopefully every single day 
If you're looking for your second listen, check out the Locked On NFL podcast for all of the biggest stories across the league. From a league-wide perspective, a lot of big playoff implications in these games on Sunday that I know all of our rotating hosts on the Locked On NFL podcast will be breaking down for you all week long. So go check that out. Come on back tomorrow for another episode of Locked On Vikings and Locked On Bears. And of course, you know we'll be here for you after whatever happens in that wild Sunday game as well. Best of luck, Luke, to your Vikings in the playoffs. We'll be rooting for our number one overall pick here in Chicago. And I think that's going to do it for our crossover Thursday. So as we both say, go Vikings. <laughs> as we both say, go Vikings and go Houston Texans. 